go. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just get find my slides. Oh. oh, I see. Sorry, I have. I just got to open them first. No, wrong one. There it is. Just reduce that, and then oh, I don't want that. Sorry, let me try again. Okay, now we're in business. So, just um, it up and go there. Okay, so this is, I, I think, one of the most interesting conversations because so far what's happened, if you think about it, what we've been doing is concentrating on in front of us in terms of their own um, development and performance. And now concentrate is development of the organization. So the idea is now we change the focus to how we interact with the working environment. So just mute yourself if you haven't already, because there's just a bit of background noise there. So this is really about the organization. And so um, now this when unfortunately when you use the word innovation, everyone thinks Google and all the rest of it. It, this could be a simple thing, such as a whiteboard needs to be put in this position or this needs to be done or we need to procedure for whatever. So it's not, it doesn't have to be anything earth shattering and everybody's got enough to do. It's not as if any of you are got some spare time on your hands. So I would suspect that one, there, there are probably three criteria that are important here. One is the cost, Another is the ease of implementation. And I guess the other is what is a cost, ease of implementation, and perhaps its effectiveness. So what I'm suggesting here is if people come to a meeting with you and they put an idea on the table and you have a conversation about it, you're, not, you're under no pressure to put everything in place. In fact, there'll be some things that'll come to you, I'm just being very practical about this, that just may not work or the time isn't right. So don't okay. feel any obligation to just implement whatever people put forward. Um, and that's important. Having said that, I don't think you can really have a decent conversation around this unless people come to you with a thought, suggestion, or an idea. So please share the questions with people. And of course, you're on the receiving end and you're also probably going to, you know, you'll, you'll be having a meeting with, you, you know, your manager as well. So obviously you can't, well, not obviously, but you can't really go to this meeting without a suggestion or a thought or an idea. So I would be saying to any of you, if somebody, if you if you share the questions and there's only a few, like always, and the person hasn't got anything to say, then just terminate the conversation because what's the point of plowing on? So in other words, the, the quid pro quo is you'll ask, but someone's got to give you something to work with, right? So that's important, it's very important. Um, otherwise it's just a waste of time. We don't want to waste your time. So let me just give you a little bit of a insight into that. So I'll just show the framework again. I'll talk about the questions around the, the continuous innovation, continuous improvement conversation, and then some generic tips and hints on how you might make that effective. So the objective is pretty clear in my mind, and that is dis discuss ideas to enhance the workplace right? That's ultimately what it's about. Now, you might say, well, when you say workplace, what are you talking about? Well, look, ideally, it would be the area that you work in. I mean, that's where I would like it to land, because obviously, um, you know, you as the manager, if you're the manager in that area, well, you, you, you know, you, you can sort of do something about that, hopefully, as long as it's not too, you know, not bigger than being hurt. But that's ultimately what it's about. 
And, and I'll give you some parameters around this as well so that you're not sort of sitting there going, I wonder what people will come to me with. So, and by all means, I, 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 I'll be obviously giving, I'll send these slides through to Joel, but the thing I'd also say is you might want to give people the prompter. There's another slide in here that's a prompter as well that might be very useful. The reason I'm excited about this conversation is if you think about this, let's say you've got, I don't know, I don't know quite what the numbers are, but let's assume there's about 400 people and there's 400 conversations going on about innovation and continuous improvement across the organisation. That is pretty exciting because there's going to be some good things that will come out of it. Okay, so just look at it from the big picture point of view. Um, and that's exciting. And some of those things can be implemented fairly easily, I have no doubt. So that's the big picture. I've, by the way, had some really great anecdotal feedback from people about the um, five conversations and how effective it is. It's opened up new lines of communication between people, and I'm thrilled to hear that. So, um, you know, just keep persevering with that. And, and you might, some of you may be feeling guilty that you're not up to number five. Look, just get the others done. I can guarantee to you it'll be an investment in your time. You will find that things will work better in other areas and you just need to get, get on and do it. Very soon, uh, I will be sending you out a survey. Um, and then you might recall right at the beginning, I gave you a survey, 50 statements. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is send you out the same survey and hopefully the same people. There might be a few changes here and there, of course, but ultimately we'll be able to compare the before and after survey, even after only five conversations, and we'll see whether it's made any change at all with morale and, uh, you know, um, you know the, uh, engagement and all of the things that we've looked at. I suspect it will. And we, of course, no names will be attached to it, but there'll be, you know, you can see how your area is going and tracking against others. So, so we'll be doing that fairly soon because I'd like to get, I'm keen to get some runs on the board and give you some hope and evidence that this thing is working extremely well, not just in your area, but right across the organisation. So we'll see about that. So there's the five conversations. And so, as I said earlier, if you're just sort of in a situation where you haven't got up to number five, then I would suggest to do the ones you haven't done. Now, a lot of you have given me feedback about conversation four in the sense of saying, well, you know, we've covered off on a lot of the things that we can do in conversation two and three in terms of either building on those strengths or minimizing those weaknesses. Great. So you don't have to have a very long conversation in four. You might just reiterate the key points that have been raised. And remember, with learning and development, it's not all around sending people off to courses. It could be just about showing people how to do something, mentoring people, all the rest of it. So the whole purpose of four is to make sure that you there's an action plan in place to build on conversation two and three. And in fact, you know, in some organizations, they actually use this as their training needs analysis, which is great. Conversation five is all about the workplace and that's the difference. And so let's look at that in a bit more closer detail. Now, looks a bit complicated there on the screen, but it's not really, this is a prompter. And I, I think it would be worth your while if, you're, if you feel comfortable to send this out to people prior to that aren't here today and just say well you know have a think about this because we're going to have a conversation around um, innovation continuous improvement you may not know where to start but here are some suggestions and it's also it's always it's all about the efficiency and effectiveness of the workplace so it could be improving quality it could be about managing time it could be about increasing job safety it could be about increasing productivity. It could be about cost savings. It could be about meeting deadlines. How can we better meet deadlines? What, what can we do to do that? It could be about improving cooperation between you and another team. As you know from the survey results, 
uh, cross-functional communication was not ideal. So it could be about how do we actually improve cross-functional communication, right? So it could be about that as well. And of course, it could be about how do we improve systems and processes. I wouldn't mind $100 for every one of you, not you necessarily, but people that have said to me, oh, well, this system isn't working or that's that needs changing or whatever. Um, well, there's an opportunity to talk about this. So, so there's plenty there and that's not the end of it. That's just a little prompter to give you some suggestions about where to start. I always think if you think about continuous improvement this way, if you think about your discipline, that is your working environment and what you spend the majority of your time doing, this is the place to start. Because obviously, if you're spending a lot of time, let's say, writing reports, then the obvious place to start is improving our report writing or, you know, what happens to those reports or whatever, because you get a small change improvement in that area it makes a massive difference so instead of looking for obscure things go for the big fish look for the things that you know you do you spend the majority of your time on and that will make a big difference so i think that should give people confidence for you to sort of say well you know i want you to have a think about this before we meet have some have some uh, ideas in your head about how you might uh, implement this and so the conversation should be a really pleasant, smooth, easy conversation to have. But as I said earlier, it doesn't mean that everything that comes to you needs to be implemented because it's practically impossible anyway. But I'll guarantee there'll be some good things coming out. And if you do, in your own position, put those things in place because they're easy to do, but they'll make a difference, I'll guarantee to you that people will start actually coming forward with more and more good ideas and thinking. The old thinking around this is that the manager was should be the one doing all this and everyone else just mindlessly goes along. Not true, because there's people who are working, you know, at the coalface, so to speak, who actually have probably a better grasp of what needs to be done to improve things. And your job, if you are a manager or a leader in some capacity, is actually to draw out of people what those things are. That really is the key. And then you become the facilitator of that. So that's the way, that's the thinking behind it, at least. Um, I'll just stop there before I share the questions, because some of you might have some questions that you might want to ask. Is everyone clear on what we're trying to do there? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. So it's exciting to think that we can um, do that and have that conversation with people. And and I and you will be. I, I'm sure some of you will be very pleasantly surprised at what people come up with. But the trick is that people must come to that meeting with something. That's the key. It won't happen otherwise. Well, it could, but it's. I want people to think about these things. And you see, what we're doing, is we're giving people a sense of responsibility around improvement and it's not just about you and of course when you have your meeting with your manager same deal of course come up with a suggestion and um and you know um okay so no questions everyone's good with that yep all right brilliant okay let's go back and have a look at what you're going to ask or what you should ask they're not difficult as usual pretty straightforward. The key is the preparation before, whoops, I went too far, there we go. So your first question would be, um, you know, what's your suggestion for improving the efficiency and effectiveness of the workplace? You don't have to use those exact words, of course, but uh, at the end of the day, what 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 is it? So, and and what I, what I suggest you do there is um, they might, the person you're having a conversation with might just not be, you know, they'll say a few words, draw them out. You want to hear what, you know, tell us more about it, you know, and, and be prepared to ask some supplementary questions. You want to know what it's all about. Get Talk them through. Um, and the, the key thing for you is not to make a judgment too early. You must just allow the person to share because you, you may well be right. You may have 
you sort of heard enough and you think, well, that's not going to work and they can see it on your face and then that just stifle. And remember, it's not, you might be factually correct, but it stifles their sort of inclination to suggest something that might work. So let them talk, just talk to me. And, you know, if, you, if you're discerning about this and you ask the right questions, and, 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 you know, in the back of your mind, you know, it's not completely practical. Well, they'll probably come to that conclusion too, just by the way you're having a conversation with them. But please don't judge. I've, ha I've seen managers do this. Oh, that won't work. Well, <laughs> that's may well be factually true. But the broader implications of that is that um, maybe everything that I put forward to my manager, they might assume that it doesn't work. So why would I bother doing that? And then you're left with a situation where you're completely responsible for continuous improvement. And that's not- Tim. Yeah. I was just going to ask, so instead of saying, look, it won't work, knowing full well it may or may not, yeah. um, would the better approach be is to just further ask why and, yeah. and, and investigate further? So, you know, in my experience, these things are impediments to success. Well, you know, what are your thoughts? And, and, and sort of start fleshing out there at that time in that process or or, yeah. or or just take it on board, walk away and, and address it at another time? No, no, you'll probably notice, I'll get to the other questions in a minute. You, I do want you to ask about the barriers and I do want you to ask how it's going to improve things. So they're definitely key questions, Dan. But I think the key thing is give them time to express their idea in its fullest in other words don't and don't make assumptions that you know what they're talking about just let them go and just say um you know questions like you know tell me more about that where would this be applicable how might it be you know um you know just just let them talk basically um and um another curious question you might ask if you feel comfortable is i'm curious why do you think that's important you know um and hear what they have to say. So I don't want you just to launch straight into question two the moment they put two or three words, string two or three words together, let them talk about it. And that's the important thing. I'm assuming- Can I ask another question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. What's a what's a what's what's the sweet spot for timing? Like, I mean, we're all constrained by time. So yeah, we don't, we want to listen to everyone and take on all options, but like, is, is it five minutes, 10 minutes more? Is it dependent on the nature of the- of, of the um, issue or, or what, what's a good approach? I, I think, Dan, I think you could comfortably get through all of this um, in 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but I would, you know, any more on that may not be necessary. So I think if you take it in its entirety, 20 to 30 minutes should be fine. If you're really engaged in it and it's a great idea and you're building a better relationship with the person through this conversation, then go for it, go longer. But you shouldn't need too much more than that, I wouldn't have thought. All of these questions are designed, you know, with four questions each. They, they're they designed for short, productive conversations. So, um, yeah, you'll just have to use your judgment there. But I'm, the point I'm trying to make is don't, jump to conclusions too quickly, allow people to share their idea in its entirety. In other words, I think, and now you can't really measure this, but one of the successes of it would be that the person walks away and thinks, I really did express myself well there and I was given the opportunity to do that. I think if they, if they, if, you know what it's like sometimes when you go to a meeting and you sort of get cut off and you're trying to say something and you don't quite get it all out, you walk away and say, oh, I should have said this and I should have said that. You don't want that to happen in this sort of situation. I want people to actually um, talk it through with you. So the conversations around the idea. So, yeah, hard to put a number to it. But 20 minutes, I reckon, you know, if I had to be pushed, I'd say that would be reasonable. Question two there, you can see that what you're up. Now, you might think, I know how this will enhance the workplace or I don't. So it's not about you. Ask them, how will it enhance our workplace? Or how will it make improvements? Whatever words you want to use. I want them to articulate that right? because I want to hear where they're coming from. You've got your own perspective on it, but when this isn't about you, this is about them and their idea. And um, now, Dan, this is where it comes in, where you can say to them, so what are the barriers that 
could get in the way here. Again, you may know the answer to this. That's not the point. Are they able to articulate to you what the barriers are? Because why is that important? It might sound a bit negative. Well, it's not because, I mean, if there's barriers, why don't we talk about them? I mean, is it a cost barrier? Is it a time barrier? Could it be that it's hard to implement barrier? Um, what are the barriers? And I think that's a reasonable question to ask. And I would like to hear what they have to say about that. And I think the last question there is um, basically where, where do we start? I mean, assuming, of course, it's a reasonable thing, uh, where do we start? So you've got three options here. You can say, where do we start? Which is a positive way. You might actually say, well, can you leave this with me? I'd like to give this some more thought. And that's not a fob off. You just want to probably think about it. And the other side of it is you might, I think the key thing here is it, it might be, you know, it's a genuine attempt for an idea, but it just, quite frankly, the timing's wrong. It might cost too much. It might take too much to implement. And in those cases, you know, you can say, great, we've had the conversation. Thank you. But, you know, at the moment, we can't go through with that. That's no, people are not stupid. They understand that not everything's going to be implemented just because they come to you. Um, and if you have a good conversation about it, people probably come to that conclusion anyway. So, you know, don't be afraid to do that because you, you don't want to string people along if you can't, uh, it can't be done. But I, I think cost, complexity, and um, uh, what was the other one? Cost, complexity, and, uh, you know, the... the effectiveness. Time. Effectiveness, that's it. Yeah, thank you. So, so in the back of your mind, cost, complexity, and effectiveness could be three things that you could look at. So, for example, I could say it's a good idea. It's just going to cost us money and we don't have a budget for it. Um, it's a good idea, however, in terms of implementing it, it's going to take us some time, effort, and energy, and we don't have that at the moment, but we can revisit that next time we have a continuous improvement conversation. Remember, you're going to have another one of these. And the third one could be, um, look, I think the, the, the amount of effort we put in is probably not going to lead to a great result out in terms of effective, that kind of thing. So, so that's fine. The, the, it's having the conversation. It's talking about improvements. That's the key. And a good one coming out of it. Um, so some good questions there. Uh, anything else that anyone would like to ask? Uh, no. so. Good. Yeah. Okay. So look, we're running out of time. I'm going to go into another meeting. We'll just, there's another slide there that you might like to look at, which I I kind of it's a generic slide, but it's just a little guide as to you know yourself and how you can get the best out of these conversations. Um, have a little read through that. I think. Um, Preparation is critical for this one, obviously. You know, preparation from their point of view, that is the person who's on the receiving end. All right, so folks, that's it for me, unless there's anything else. All good? Okay. So All good, thanks. Just try and catch up with your conversations, please, because it's critical to our success and... Um, and yeah, it, I hope I hope you're getting good results out of it from in your own area, and just keep moving on it because it's really really important to what we're doing here. So, yeah. thanks everyone. Thank you, yeah. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye.